Welcome back to my next video. Today I'm going to show you a not so common suspension modification. I know you probably have seen some of my other suspension modifications and some probably don't make sense why go through all that extent. But when, I, when it's all said and done and I finish all my suspension modifications, I think this will really make sense for everyone. Really my, uh, my goal on this is to provide a better handling, safer driving RV. And that's it. Unfortunately, it doesn't come from the manufacturer that way. Now, if you do like the way your uh, Sprinter van already drives, you know, uh, so be it. But uh, there are uh, modifications out there that can make that handling a little bit better. So let's go down below. Now, this is not so much uh, how to. It will show you how to do it, but there's a much better video from the uh, manufacturer that makes this that gives you step-by-step -step instructions, and I'll put the link below. But my video is going to show that, yes, you can do it in the driveway. So let's uh, look down below. Down below here, this is what I have. See this uh, blue component here? That is a track bar. Not to be confused with a traction bar. The purpose of what it does is it actually ties the framing of the chassis to the axle better. Right now, I have leaf spring suspension and technically the leaf spring suspension is not supposed to move uh, that much compared to the chassis framing but practical experience out there has shown that it does this is a very common modification on the Ford F53 chassis that would be the uh, bigger class A gas motorhomes that are on the F53 chassis so this is a very common modification for that it is not very popular on the uh, Sprinter chassis from what, what I've seen. It took me a long time to figure out if this is what I actually wanted to do. I'm surprised that somebody actually makes this. The manufacturer uh, is a pretty, you know, I know who they are. As in, I followed them uh, when I used to have a big motorhome. That's something I used to follow back in the days. So I know they're a very uh, reputable, uh, we'll call it, manufacturer. And they're also a repair facility. But this is just a quick overview. I'll show you how I installed it. But like I said, I will put the uh, link to the installation video that will give you a much better detail on how to install it. The only difference with their video is they installed it with the whole RV raised up in the air. I, of course, don't have that set up, so I have to do it on the uh, ground, and that made the installation that much more difficult. But overall, it was a pretty easy and quick installation. I think it took me probably about an hour uh, with some uh, breaks uh, in between at the most. And the toughest part was really just tightening all the uh, bolts down with such limited access from down below. Let me explain to you uh, how this track bar works. Okay, I'm going to use this uh, tape measure as representative uh, of an RV. So let's uh, go over the lingo here on how everything works. When we talk about sway, what a sway bar or anti-sway bar does is it actually prevents the RV from going this way. So when you hit a driveway or a, uh, a big hole really slow, you know, it, the RV sways back and forth. And that's the purpose of a sway bar. A track bar, the purpose of that is it prevents the RV from doing this. In airplane lingo, this would be yaw. And of course, for us common people, this would be the tail on a dog going back and forth. So if we can represent when a semi passes by, when they uh, pass by really quick or big truck, SUV, you know, it has a tendency to push you, you know, the tail swings over and then it swings back. Well, this is what this track bar is supposed to do is, it's supposed to help out on this. And that is actually my biggest issue driving on the highway. Now these are bad enough with the uh, sway going through the um, driveway approaches, but really I was always looking for on the highway, I want this thing to handle good. And you're going to hear sometimes uh, reports that a sway bar really helped on the highway. Well, the main purpose of the sway bar is really not on the highway. But I guess it does make sense because if you, can, if you can imagine when a wind blows hard and it sways, it can also have a, that swaying also has a tendency to make it yaw at the same time. And that's where you're fighting that steering wheel and 
you have that white knuckle experience. I'm gonna put a link in the description, or I'll put a link to their actual YouTube video, but their video is uh, very high quality and you're really going to like it on how to install it. Okay, today I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I am going to do a chassis movement test. Now this is a pretty crude test, but what you will see here is I have this aluminum bar. It's attached to the frame itself. And then this is the uh, sway bar end link. And obviously the sway bar is attached to the axle down below and less likely going to move. You'll also see, you can see the uh, leaf spring right here. But I'm going to uh, wag the back of the RV, kind of like how a dog, side to side. And we'll see how much movement there is. Technically, on a leaf spring suspension, there shouldn't be any movement. But uh, we'll see if there's any movement. I'll be right back. Okay, the purpose of that test was actually to simulate when a truck or an SUV, you know, when they uh, go past you, you get that wind bow, and the wind actually pushes the side of the RV. And let's take this off now. I'll have to review the uh, video and see what the, the end results are here. But there is a fix for this. There is an aftermarket part called a track bar. It's like a panhard rod that connects the uh, chassis to the, sorry, the frame of the RV to the axle. So let's check it out. These are the parts I have and some of the tools I'm going to use. Obviously this is the track bar components all in blue, same as the hardware. I did set aside these. These bolts are the same as these, except these are a little shorter. These are the longer ones. These longer ones are the ones we will need, so I will put these away. They will not be used at all. Then some of the tools I have. I have a big uh, adjustable wrench, you know, a socket. Uh, inch and an eighth, and inch and a sixteenth. These actually fit these bigger bolts here and then I have a 18 or 19 millimeter to take off the existing hardware underneath and a three-quarter inch some three-quarter inch open wrenches and of course my air tools over there the impact drivers if you notice I also have the tires lifted up on blocks so each one of those are an inch and it's just to give me a little bit more room down below. I will not be able to put this on the leveling jacks because it actually needs to be at ride height. Ride height means it has to be at your regular suspension. This is the uh, truck bar so if you stick around I'll show you how I install it anyways. Okay here we go. I'm gonna start doing my install here and this install is more to show you that it can be done at home. I highly recommend uh, going to the link I have in the description that will really give you a very thorough detail of how everything is supposed to be installed. Now, I do have a lot of things already pre-loosened, so it just makes the uh, videoing a little bit easier. If you're, uh, if you're not skinny, this may be a little bit uh, difficult, but let's take this off. Just like that. Remember I said everything was pre-loosened. Looks like uh, these we have to save two of these to uh, reinstall. Oh, I love these, having these air, air tools. Um, I think on the instructions it says to put the red Loctite on here first. I'm going to get everything kind of uh, pre-assembled before I do the Loctite. That way the uh, Loctite doesn't start uh, uh, drying. Especially uh, this is the red Loctite, which is the super strong Loctite and I want to be prepared before it starts drying and, 
if it starts drying by the time I get to it and then I put a torque wrench to it uh, probably not the best so I'm just going to uh, dry fit these for now Then what I'm going to do is, I will remove these one at a time, put the uh, thread locker on, on there, tighten it back up, and do one at a time so it doesn't move on me and the holes are, are lined up. And then I'm going to hit it with a uh, torque wrench right away, so you won't need to see that part. And after I'm done, I'll put this... I think this bar goes on next, if I saw it correctly, it was at this angle. You see all these stickers here? Back in my old days, my younger days, I had to take, my OCD would have taken all these stickers off, even though they have the part numbers on them. I couldn't stand having stickers on them, but I'm leaving them all on there this time.
I think what I'll do now that these are all lined up at right height now I can actually uh, get it on my leveling jacks and do a final torque on these two that I can't really uh, get to can't get to with the uh, proper uh, leverage so that's it